All right, we go to the last presentation, again, uh, remote. It's, uh, the title is Evaluating the ro Robustness of Off-Policy Evaluation. And presenter is here. We see you. We see the slides. All should be good. Okay, and I'm clicking the slide, and, but I, can, I can't see the transition in slide, actually. Again, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm checking the transition this night. Ah, and yeah, I found now it works. Okay. Thanks. So hi, I'm Haruka Kiyohara, an undergraduate student from Tokyo Institute of Technology. And today I'm happy to share our work evaluating the robustness of a policy evaluation here at the Rexis conference. So in many real world recommender systems, we often aim to maximize or reverse the item recommendation using some machine learning policies such as contextual bounded. So here, when a user comes to the system, the policy chooses which item to present to the user, and after the user examines the recommended item, they receive some implicit feedback such as click as a word. And indeed, you know, the system has such interactions over and over again. And it is quite interesting that uh, from a bit different perspective, the policy also correct log data variable for future decision making. So, I mean, we have plenty of log banded feedback data corrected by the behavior policy or data correction policy, where X indicates the user context and A is an action or item chosen by the behavior policy and R is a reward observed for corresponding item. And we are really motivated to use this variable log banded feedback data to improve future decision making, for example, by evaluating and identifying good counterfactual policies that will be deployed in the future. So today I'm going to talk about a policy evaluation, uh, which we evaluate a counterfactual policy using only log banded feedback data. And especially, I will focus on the estimator selection program in a policy evaluation, which is essential to provide a safe policy evaluation method uh, in practical situation. And our goal is to provide you um, experimental procedures that can evaluate the estimator's robustness uh, in a policy evaluation, which we'll describe detail in later. But first, uh, I'd like to start from a brief introduction of a policy evaluation. So in OPE, we aim to evaluate the performance of a new or so-called evaluation policy using only the banded feedback data. And an OPE estimator, we had estimates the policy value or the uh, expected reward of the evaluation policy, which have never been deployed to the real system. And yeah, accurate OP is actually really beneficial because uh, we can avoid risk in online deployment by identifying promising counterfactual policies among many candidates. However, yeah, deriving the uh, uh, policy value of the variation policy is not so tribal because there is always this relationship between the behavior and the variation policy so that the log data is biased. So to overcome this issue, the research community has produced a number of OP estimators with different hyperparameters. So I will introduce two of them as examples. And First, uh, inverse probability weighting, or IPW, try to mitigate the distribution shift between the behavior and the variation policy using important sampling technique. And IPW is unbiased and also hyperparameter free when, uh, when the behavior policy is known. However, IPW is also known to suffer from a large variance, uh, which leads to unstable estimation. So to tackle the variance issue of IPW, the robust uh, leverages baseline estimation Q hat as a control variant and performs importance weighting only on its residual. And yeah, DR is actually beneficial because uh, it is unbiased and also lowers the variance of IPW. However, what might be difficult for practitioner is that uh, we need to uh, tune additional hyperparameter Q hat as a baseline. And, and indeed, uh, there are more and more advanced OP estimators with different hyperparameters. 
So here, one emerging challenge for practitioners is to decide which OP estimator and its hyperparameter to use uh, with their data or in the specific application, the so-called estimator selection program. And indeed, uh, there are several desirable properties of OP estimators in practical situation. For example, an estimator that works without significant hyperparameter tuning is preferable because hyperparameters may depend on uh, both log data and evaluation policy, and it might be difficult to tune only using biased log banded feedback data. And also, yeah, a um, stable estimator across various evaluation policy is also suitable because uh, we need to evaluate multiple candidate policies to choose from. And finally, uh, it is also better if an estimator shows acceptable performance, even in the worst case, uh, to avoid risk caused by the estimation uncertainties. So to avoid these uh, desirable properties of OP estimators, we want to evaluate the estimator's robustness to the possible configuration changes, such as in hyperparameters and evaluation policy. So how can we evaluate the kind of estimator's robustness in OP experiments? Unfortunately, the current, uh, the current uh, experimental procedure fails to provide such an informative result on estimator's robustness, yeah, because it only compares the mean scale error on a single given set of evaluation policy and hyperparameters. So uh, it cannot tell which estimator is robust to the possible configuration changes, such as in hyperparameters and evaluation policy, and making the estimator selection a hard problem. So to tackle the uh, current issue in experimental procedure and facilitate a more like uh, more safe application of a policy evaluation, we develop interpretable evaluation for offline evaluation that can evaluate the estimator's robustness to the possible configuration changes, such as in hyperparameters and evaluation policy. And IOE has actually two additional advantages. And first, uh, it provides a visual interpretation of the estimator's error distribution so that the, uh, how an estimator is robust uh, to the possible configuration changes is really understandable to the users. And also, since we publicize an open source Python software, PyIOE, this experimental procedure can easily be implemented uh, in the user's specific application. So now uh, let's see how we evaluate the estimator's robustness to the possible configuration changes. We have four steps in IEOE. First, uh, we initialize the configuration space of hyperparameters, evaluation policy, and also random seed. And then for each random seed, we sample configuration based on the seed. And then we calculate estimator scale error on the sampled configuration. And by doing this for every random seed, uh, every time we have different uh, set of configuration, so that finally we obtain the distribution of scaled errors on various configuration. And after gaining the scaled error, we approximate cumulative distribution function. And the plot of the CDF curve is quite interpretable. And in this plot, uh, x-axis shows squared error and y-axis uh, indicates uh, cumulative probability. So that if an uh, estimator shows high probability uh, in small scale error regions, which means uh, the upper left side, uh, the OP estimator is more accurate. And in this case, it is obvious that this pink estimator is more robust to the possible configuration changes compared to the orange one, especially in the worst case. So by using CDF, uh, we can, yeah, of course, verify which estimator to use, but also why and how the estimator is preferable. And finally, we applied IOE to estimate the selection in a real e-commerce platform. And with their data, the result demonstrates that the estimator called SNIPW is stably accurate across various configurations, while other estimator uh, potentially fell in some cases. And we also verify this observation in a quantitative manner using some matrix derived from CDF, which we describe detail in detail in our paper. And the platform now uses SNIPW based on our IOA analysis. 
So this is a take home message. And today uh, I talked about a policy evaluation, which is beneficial for identifying good counterfactual policies. And in practical situation, this goodness can be defined as the estimator's robustness to the possible configuration changes, such as in hyperparameters and inversion policies. However, uh, the conventional experimental procedure fails to evaluate such an estimator's robustness to the possible configuration changes so that uh, it fails to provide such an informative result in estimator selection program. So to tackle the issue, we developed IEOE that can evaluate estimator's robustness to the possible configuration changes. And IEOE also conveys uh, the experimental result in a very interpretable manner. And we believe that IEOE can help practitioner to choose a rival OP estimator in practical situation or the specific application. So thank you for listening and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. We have time for a few questions. There's already one. Uh, there's a question on which e-commerce platform you tested this. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a Japanese e-commerce platform we tested, and they optimized coupon. Uh, they optimized coupon. How do you say distribution uh, to the users? And we uh, we do that uh, application in of policy variation. Okay. Other questions? I have one thing when I read your paper, you, the, the last paragraph says you, you need at least two log feed, banded feedback data sets, um, but it would be better to just need one, right? How, how, severe, uh, is yeah. the, how severe is that limitation? Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, so in the real world experiment, uh, we to evaluate the estimator's accuracy, uh, we need to identify the own policy, policy value, or the approximation of the grand truth uh, policy performance. So that uh, in real world experiment, we need at least two policies uh, that uh, that we can like use one of them as a uh, behavior policy and also log banded feedback data, and we uh, make an another one as the evaluation policy, and we can uh, we sh we should know that uh, evaluation policy is grand truth policy value, so that uh, that in the sense uh, we need at least uh, two performance uh, to. Uh, policies, uh, the correct uh, data online. Okay, thanks. There's one more question online. Uh, do your results differ based on what data sets you choose? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, pardon me. The, the question is if you, if you obtain different results for different data sets. Uh, yeah. Definitely. So we, we may have a different uh, result, which estimator is uh, preferable uh, depending on data, because uh, yeah, it, so there is um, advantages and disadvantages of OP estimators, and sometimes uh, they are very uh, uh, prone to like uh, variance, and some, sometimes uh, they are prone to bias. So there's uh, always bias variance trade off, and so in that sense, uh, depending on data, the, uh, the like desirable OP estimator or suitable OP estimator may changes. And we actually uh, conduct uh, two other uh, benchmarking experiment on uh, real world public data set and also the uh, synthetic data from um, multi-class uh, classification to uh, bandit reduction data set. And we find that uh, pre preferable estimator may changes on the, uh, based on the data. Okay, thank you very much. I think that concludes the yeah. session. Thanks again. Thank you so much.